Hi, welcome to another test equipment teardown. This is the brand spanking new, barely released Siglin SDG uh, 2100X series. I believe this is once again the only one in the country and thanks to uh, Charles from uh, Trio Test and Measurement for loaning me this one. I hope I don't break it. Anyway, um, very impressive specs on this thing. 1.2 gig sample per second, uh, 120 megahertz. It comes in a 40 megahertz and I think 60 megahertz or 80 or something like that. Uh, the 40 megahertz model starts at uh, 499 US dollars, I think just below that in uh, euros. But this is the higher end model, the 120 megahertz version. I'm not sure if it's the same uh, hardware inside and it's just uh, software. It's not software upgradable, I don't believe. Um, so it could very well have uh, different uh, hardware inside the thing. I hope it's not just a firmware difference. Anyway, this top of the line one, 899 US dollars. But for the specs, absolutely incredible. It's got a touch screen uh, interface. I might be out, you've uh, seen it in a previous video, a brief mention of it. Dual channel, um, ARB capability. Uh, 20 volts peak to peak output, 80 dB dynamic range claimed, and that 16 bit. 16-bit converter, so they reckon. We'll take a look, see what converter they're using. Um, DAC, that is. Uh, 1.2 gig samples per second. Woohoo! You know what we say here on the EV blog, don't turn it on, take it apart. And it looks and feels decent quality, decent tilting bail on the thing, by the way. Um, uh, typical uh, sort of, uh, they're pretty stiff rubber uh, surrounds. Don't mind them anyway. It means that you can uh, drop the damn thing onto the uh, floor and it's you're not going to bust your knob. Nothing worse than busting your knob, let me tell you. And uh, on the back here, uh, once again, these cheap-ass QC pass stickers. I don't know, it doesn't instill a lot of confidence. Anyway, um, come standard with uh, Ethernet as most things do these days. Uh, USB looks like it has external frequency counter, auxiliary in out. I'm not sure what the auxiliary's uh, doing, probably some sort of uh, trigger out, um, in or out, and uh, a 10 megahertz uh, reference if you've got a lab standard. That's very nice. And it should very easily slide off. We've got some torque screws in here. These would be metal threaded inserts, no worries at all. And uh, the thing we're, main thing we're interested in is, of course, the uh, DAC. What DAC they're using in, what 16-bit DAC uh, they're using for the claimed um, 1.2 gig sample per second. So it looks like uh, maybe a screw on the bottom. The front uh, we don't have to take off. Um, there's one screw on the back here. If we take that off, um, it should just slide off. And I had to take the tilting bale as well off, but uh, no worries there whatsoever. Once again... You know, Siglent don't do metal work that well. Siglent metal work is never impressive. But, uh, yeah, no, there's no rust. Um, but, yeah, it just seems like, you know, rough and ready. Doesn't instill a lot of confidence. But Siglent products are built down to a price. You get a real big bang for your buck. And, ta-da, look inside. Wow, that's nice and clean. Well laid out, I like that. That really is rather clean what they've got is uh once again first thing i always uh notice about these sort of things um you know airflow and uh, stuff like that got a fan on the side um it's not particularly loud uh blowing out this side sucking in they've got a grill in there they've got there you go between the uh, power supply and just a big uh, <laughs> a big cut out on the other side so airflow they've you know yeah, it's not the best thing I've seen, but it's probably adequate. Not not sure why you'd need a fan in something like this. How many watts does it take? I might have to actually uh, power the thing up and have a look. And there you go. Almost 18 watts for this thing. I mean, how many, uh, you know, a 31 VA power factor is not that uh, terrific at uh, 0.56. You know, why do you need, like, 18 watts to run a, you know, a, a SIG Gen? I, ah. Uh, but yes, it has a real clunk and power switch on it, so it doesn't draw anything when you switch it off. Beauty. But anyhow, it is very neat and tidy inside, and I like the, uh, there's the main FPGA down there by the looks of it, and like the, the fan is like sucking the air straight across that heatsink. Beautiful. Um, they're blocking the vents up here, though, with the, uh, all the ribbon cables there. That's a bit meh, but you know, it doesn't matter because we're not talking about much power at all. Anyway, um, not sure why they've got the two separate uh, boards here. I don't think they're opto-isolated. We'll have a 
good look down there, but uh, maybe they've got like a generic, uh, it looks like a generic uh, processor board that maybe they use for different uh, instruments and things like that. And of course, the, you've got your main um, DAC and, you know, your DAC will be down. That's probably the DAC right there, I'd be saying. And uh, your output relays and all your output uh, amps and stuff like that. So that's our whole uh, analog board. So I don't know, generic, uh, probably got a JTAG interface down there by the looks of it um, to program the main processor. So let's take a look at some detail, but power supply in here looks quite neat. We'll have a look at that first. That power supply is not too uh, shabby at all. They've got a uh, the earth cable coming up here, heat shrunk on there. I would have preferred to... Uh, see that, you know, I've just got the spade lug, would have preferred to see a proper uh, nut and washer interface, but nah, nothing doing, um, they've got a protected uh, glass shoes down there, like a protective uh, cover over it, looks like maybe mov protection down there, is it, can't quite see, anyway, they put some celastic on that, uh, nice big um, mains wiring going over here to the front panel switch over there, I like that, they ran out of room to obviously route that on the board and to keep their uh, mains um, voltage clearance and stuff like that. So there's jumping a cable over there. That's even got heat shrink on it. Gee, you know, they've gone to a bit of trouble to uh, tie them together there. Um, all the output uh, caps have been celastic down and it's just uh, rather neat and tidy. It's got all the uh, requisite stuff you'd expect. And our main input filter cap, Rubicon, thank you very much. They haven't skimped there, very nice. And it looks like almost all of the output caps are Rubicon. Thank you very much. Well, we've got a proper isolation slot down there, routed out around the uh, mains connector front panel switch, because, you know, this is the, <laughs> here's the 240 volt mains, and here's the um, output uh, secondary so side. So, yeah, you've got to have that isolation slot. But that is a rather neat and tidy power supply. Looks like it's using quality parts. It's got all the requisite stuff. Um, yeah, so thumbs up to that. And the main processor down there, I don't think I've seen one of these puppies before. This is a Texas Instruments AM3352. Uh, it's part of the uh, Satara family processor. I don't know what Satara means, just some um, wank word they've uh, pulled out of their backside. Anyway, it's a, basically an ARM Cortex A8. It's got some image processing built in. It uh, supports Linux and Android, those you know high-end operating systems. Got Ethernet, Mac built in, and all the requisite um, stuff and this one is the uh, ZCZ which is the uh, can go from uh, well I think 60 on the end there is the 600 megahertz model but uh, it can go up to one gig so pretty speedy processor and then we've got our firmware flash memory and just some um, SD RAM surrounding that nothing much doing on there at all it's all pretty boring and hello, micro SD card socket down there by the looks of it. That allows them to, uh, you know, boot stuff on here, probably program it, do some development and uh, stuff like that. But uh, it's not, uh, uh, well, there's nothing in there. So they obviously, you know, they're paid for that connector. They've put it on in production. So obviously they're using it. If they didn't intend to use it during the production processing somehow, then, you know, you wouldn't pay the money to actually populate it. And I presume we've got a JTAG interface there, and this little uh, five-pin job, could that be some sort of uh, serial monitor interface, perhaps? I know what you're saying, Dave. Show us the DAC. Well, here it is. And yes, they're not lying. It's a uh, TX DAC from uh, Analog Devices. Uh, it's the AD9120 Do, and it does the business as it says on the front. This is a dual channel, 16-bit DAC, high dynamic range, uh, 1.2 gig samples per second. This puppy goes for about, well, on uh, DigiKey at least, goes for uh, 60 bucks in 2,000 quantities. It's not not a cheap chip that you are uh, designing willy-nilly. And in terms of power consumption, this thing takes about uh, one and a half watts on its own, uh, operating at the full uh, one gig sample per second. So, and it really is a very professional high-end uh, DAC, and I'll link in the data sheet, of course, for all you DAC aficionados, and you can uh, drool over the specs for yourself. But yep, they're not lying. It does the business, and looks like we've got some uh, anti aliasing output filters next to it that's uh that's what you'd expect they've got that all uh all discreet you can see the little uh blue parts there are the inductors you should be able to see the windings on those perhaps 
And, uh, yeah, they're, that's a complex network, if there ever was one. And, of course, as you'd expect, there's two of those. So, two identical uh, networks. A couple of missing parts there. I'm not sure what the business is there. There we go. So, uh, where's Wally? And the accuracy and stability is going to depend upon that puppy. Um, I don't know e who's who's that manufacturer of that 10 megahertz reference oscillator. But as you saw on the back, if you've got a much better uh, lab frequency reference standard, 10 megahertz reference standard, plug it in and use that for this uh, high end instrument. Because really, this is quite a high spec unit and. You know, if you want to get the performance out of it, probably worthwhile sticking in an external reference. And they've got decent relay switching on the output as well. NEC, thank you very much. Uh, no one hung low rubbish in here. And there's our output amplifiers. Uh, two of them there, mounted on a uh, little uh, thermal pad on the back by the looks of it. Um, these are uh, Texas Instruments THS 3095. High bandwidth uh, current feedback operational amplifiers. And you can see the... Uh, 49.9 ohm output resistors there on the other side. And these are uh, specced over 200 megahertz bandwidth. So, yeah, um, presumably whether or not they use these in the 40 megahertz model or whether they use uh, lower spec parts, I don't know. We'll have to get uh, somebody else to do a tear down of the uh, 40 megahertz model. And although both connectors are down here, they've got uh, two of those per channel because it's all duplicated, all the relays, everything else. There we go, we've got another two output amplifiers up there. So it's got to go a fair way to the output connector. And although I can't get that heatsink off because it uh, uses thermal adhesive and tell you what FPGA they're using in there, unless I hook up to the JTAG and uh, try and get the ID and stuff like that, we can tell, maybe, by this puppy here, which is the EN2342 4 amp uh, buck converter. This is uh, recommended by Altera. So this is like Altera have a application note on this, how to power their uh, Altera FPGAs with this puppy. So um, almost certainly they're going to have an Altera FPGA in there. Which one? Nah, does it really matter? Anyway, that's just chewing most of the power in this thing. But look at the pin pitch on that bastard, would you? Look at it. That is evil. And that's a 0.5 millimeter pin pitch, but thankfully almost most of those pins are not used. They're just not connected or they're grouped together. And this package is really interesting here. Here's some uh, data for it. It's actually got a really big ground power uh, pads on the bottom around about this uh, location here. You can see it's a really thick package, so I'm not sure what the business is there with uh, the die and that inside of it, but it's very interesting. Here's a photo of the thing and uh, some details. You can see there's a huge ground pad on the bottom and they give you uh, footprint recommendations. There's thermal pads and everything, and it's a rather obscure package, one you're definitely not going to get uh, the footprint for in any CAD package on the planet. So, you you know, you would have to uh, roll this one your own un unless they specifically had all the uh, Empyrean um, parts already uh, done for you. But yeah, it's a pain in it. From a PCB layout point of view, you go, oh, do I have to use that package? Really? Uh, anyway, breaks the monotony. Anyway, just this uh, converter chip alone, uh, more than 10 bucks in, you know, a couple of hundred quantities. So it's not a cheap puppy either. You know, we've got lots of linear regs all around here. There we go. You know they're not uh, switching uh, converters by the uh, look, by the lack of inductors around there. And uh, it's common to get those um, five pin uh, packages like that for various uh, adjustable linear uh, regs, but um, yeah, so lots of power supply. That's the problem when you start talking FPGAs like this and other logic and stuff like that. You know, you need to get all these different rails. So they're going to have uh, this is 20 volts peak to peak, so they're probably going to have uh, plus minus uh, 12 or plus minus 15 uh, volt rails here for the analog section. They're going to want to keep that quiet, so that's all going to be separate. They'd have uh, separate you know, 5 or 3.3 volt digital, then they'll have the various uh, core voltages. I mean, obviously the uh, the main switch we looked at uh, down here is actually uh, doing the main uh, core uh, for, for the FPGA, main core voltage there. But yeah, I mean, you just need lots of power supply stuff. Just 
look at the board. I mean, you know, one third of it is bloody power supplies. Now, right next to the anti-aliasing filter, there's a uh, little puppy there. The uh, H1K513, and I don't know what that sucker is. Oh, is, is that some sort of uh, diff amp? And then on top of that, we've got ourselves a Texas Instruments OPA695. That's a bit of a beast. That's a uh, ultra high bandwidth current feedback uh, op amp. And it's got like, you know, 1.2 gig uh, bandwidth at a gain of uh, two. So pretty schmicky device. And once again, these two chips are duplicated on the other side, right down there. If my damn thing will focus. There we go. So clearly what's going on here with the one channel, okay, we've got our DAC here, and this is a current output DAC, by the way. So we've got ourselves a, uh, a massive uh, anti-aliasing uh, passive network here, and this has got to be a current to uh, voltage um, amplifier, and then we've got our real high bandwidth uh, voltage amplifier here, which we uh, looked at, and then... Uh, probably, I haven't looked at these two, but I'm guessing, um, maybe some, uh, DC, uh, offset stuff happening around here, and then there's our two, uh, output drivers there, so that's, uh, duplicated exactly down on the second channel as well. Yep, I just checked, uh, these two puppies here are AD8512As, they're just, uh, you know, some sort of, like, almost jelly bean, uh, low noise, uh, JFET op amps. So, as I suspected, most likely doing uh, DC offset functionality. So there you have it, not much else to it. That's a look inside the new Sigland SDS 2000 X series oscilloscope. So thanks Charles at uh, Trio Test and Measurement for uh, loaning this one, letting us have a look and uh, starting at uh, 499 bucks for the specs. Jeez, it looks pretty schmick. Let me tell you, it's built fairly well. I got no issues with that at all. It, uh, looks like it'll do the business. So as always, if you like that, please give it a big thumbs up and uh, hopefully I'll uh, do some more stuff with this before I have to send back. It's only a uh, demo loaner unit and well, hopefully um, I'll probably compare it with the existing uh, Siglent one I've got and uh, the Rigol one as well, hopefully. So if you want to discuss it, Forum link down below, blog, YouTube, comments, all that sort of jazz. Follow me on Twitter, blah, blah, blah. Support me on Patreon. Thank you to all my uh, Patreon and other uh, financial supporters. It's what keeps the blog going. And yeah, buy my merch and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Or, I don't know, if you don't like any of that, don't do any of that. That's fine too. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.